Trade Secrets is brought to you by Ruder Ware, business attorneys for business success, and by the Judd S. Alexander Foundation, supporting quality of life and economic development in Marathon County. Hi, I'm Stuart Etten, president of Ruder Ware Law Firm. Without businesses, communities would not thrive. And without communities, businesses wouldn't, well, have a place to do business. At Ruder Ware Law Firm, we've been providing counsel to Wisconsin business leaders and been a big part of our community for generations. So you could say we know a little bit about what it takes for the two to work together. That's why we're honored to present Trade Secrets here on Wisconsin Eye. It's a new series that shares candid conversations between successful Wisconsin business leaders and lets you, the audience, in on what it takes to cultivate both business and community in our great state. From Ruder Ware, thanks for watching and enjoy the show. One CEO travels to a company to meet another CEO and gets a tour. They talk business, challenges, share stories. Then the host CEO travels to another company, meets the new CEO, gets the tour. They talk business, challenges, share stories. Then we do it all over again. You get the picture. A chain of CEOs traveling around the state, meeting each other, talking business, sharing stories. That's Trade Secrets, CEO to CEO. Hi. I'm Mike Sheldon from MEPS Fishing Tackle in Anigo, Wisconsin, and I'm up in Phillips today to meet Matt Jennings and get a tour of the Phillips Metasize Corporation. But first, here's some history. In Wisconsin, innovation is not something that just comes from large cities. This is the bottom part of a glucose meter. This is the part that goes in somebody's palm. Philips Metasize, an advanced bioscience device manufacturing powerhouse, is proof of that. In 1964, with only $52,000 in startup capital, Bob Cervanka and Louis Volkerka founded Philips Plastics in the small town of Philips, Wisconsin. Their first injection molding machine was purchase used, saving half the cost of a new machine. That company, with its modest start, is now Philips Metasize. With annual sales over $600 million and employing over 3,400 people in 14 locations around the world. A global leader for over four decades, Philips Metasize is the provider of choice for design, development, and advanced manufacturing services to the most respected pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturers in the world. Philips Metasize distinguishes itself by being the trusted source for innovative concept development and lean, advanced manufacturing of complex drug delivery devices used by millions around the world. It's, it's a fascinating product that it eliminates needles in vaccine injection. Using advanced injection molding, automated assembly, and relentless quality control. Philips Metasize manufactures finished drug delivery devices and consumer diagnostics, including precision high-tolerance molded parts for pens and syringes, surgical instruments, surgery kits, and pharmaceutical packaging, all manufactured with guaranteed confidentiality in secure facilities. In the four decades since Bob Cervenka and Louis Vorkurka founded Philips Plastics, now Philips Metasize, the company's commitment to creating partnerships built on innovation, the best technologies, and having people that enable them to be on the leading edge has been its competitive advantage and continues today. Hey Mike, how you doing? Hi Matt, good. How was your drive? Good drive. Now where'd you come up from? Uh, Anigo, northeast of Wausau. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to come learn about our business. I'm anxious to have a tour of Philips Metasize today. Well, let's, uh, let's go do it. Sounds okay. good. Wow, this is an impressive building. What can you tell me about it? This building is one of uh, 14 facilities we have around the globe. 
and it's one of seven facilities we have in the state of Wisconsin, which we're headquartered in. This building was built in the year 2000. I really like all the windows, the high windows. Yeah, well, part of that is it, it brings in the sunlight, sure. but also because of uh, a lot of the equipment that we have, um, we need to be able to move that equipment with cranes, and so we've been able to blend the functionality of the cranes and the high ceilings for automated equipment and assembly, but also uh, a pleasant work environment as well. So that's a little bit about the building, Mike. If um, you're up for it, I'll show you another area of the building and some of the operations. Sure, let's go. <laughs> What's going on here, Matt? Mike. Uh, Jerry is actually looking at the end of a production line for a lens cap that goes on a glucose meter that uh, people use to test their glucose levels prior to injection of insulin. Part of what we do is we provide design development services and manufacturing services for drug delivery devices and consumable diagnostics. What we're doing here is we actually injection mold the backing. We have an inner layer uh, film that already has the logo and the decorative uh, components to it. We layer that onto the molten plastic and it transfers the image onto the plastic and then comes out in a decorated form. And then Jerry does a quick inspection and it goes on for forward processing. So later we'll see the other part of this. Let's go take a look. So what have we got here, man? So Mike, this is a uh, vessel um, or a vial that's used for biologic um, or genetic testing. A uh, sample will go inside the vial and then it'll be forward processed into a machine uh, where it'll read the sample and tell us what your genetics are or what type of virus flu or something you might have. What's interesting about this is while it looks fairly simple, it's actually quite complex. The chamber is very small. It has to be very precise, and the clarity of the plastic has to be perfect so that it can be read through the plastic with light to determine what the genetic material is. So precision and quality is, is very important in terms of what we do here. And what you see here behind us is an injection molding machine, and it's uh, picking the parts out of the machine with automation. It goes through a visual reader to determine the quality, and then it's either accepted or rejected. And that's what we're doing here. I see. Looks like a simple part, but a lot of technology goes into it. The precision of the molding and the clarity and the quality is very important in the biologics field where this is going to be used. I can understand that. We do a little uh, injection molding of soft plastic lures, so we use very low pressures. They need to be precise, but nothing like what you're doing. Well, so, so you understand the, 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 the level of precision and quality that goes into this. I think so. Let's, let's go show you some more. Sounds good. All right. So what have we got here? This is the bottom part of a glucose meter. This is the part that goes in somebody's palm. And the piece we saw earlier goes on the top where they look through. Um, subsequent to our processing here, There'll be the electronics that will be put in and some other uh, back panels as well. This is just an additional piece. What's interesting about this um, is you'll see that there's some decoration here. And this is a two-shot part. So you have one type of plastic, some decoration, and what we call a soft touch. I'll let you feel that. And it kind of gives you that oh, grippy yeah. feel and how yeah. it's soft. It'll give you that nice warm feel when you hold it. And we do that all in one process, all in the mold. Um, at the same time, all three steps. Is it two different plastics, or is it the same plastic, one just with a different finish? Great question. Yes, it's two different types of plastics mm. that give you that look and finish, and then there's also a foil applied here at the same time in the press. Wow, more sophistication. Exactly. So I think we're going to go over here and uh, look a little more about how the resin actually gets to uh, the machine. Okay. Matt, I've been in some uh, injection molding houses before, and generally they have large hoppers that are up higher than all the equipment, and then your raw plastic beads feed down into the equipment from there. And I see your setup different here. You know, Mike, that is a, a great question. 
at the time of the design of the product and manufacturing process, we try to integrate three things. Advanced injection molding, automated assembly, and the appropriate quality control in purpose-built facilities. What you're seeing here is actually part of that purpose-built facility. And what we've done here is we've taken all the hoppers that are usually above the building and we've moved them off-site. It allows us to use the Motan system more effectively, distribute the resins more efficiently, and actually a, a very good side benefit is it creates a nice clean view to the facility, makes for a better work environment, safer work environment, because you don't have to worry about things falling from the hopper into the machine. So we get better safety, we get better quality, we get better efficiencies and utilization of the, of the um, resin. Now I can understand that. Matt, what's unique about this item here? What this is, is a new innovative diagnostic test for colon cancer. And as you may know, it, in my case, everybody above 50 years of age, it's recommended by your physician to have an early detection test for colon cancer. And the method for that is a colonoscopy. This is an alternative. What it allows you to do at the comfort of your own home uh, is to grab a sample, mail it away, two weeks later the results come in, and they're just as reliable as a colonoscopy. Wow. And we're very proud of it because we've recently been nominated within the, design, the, the device industry for a um, design award for them. Interesting and nice too. Thanks. Matt, what's being produced here? So Mike, this is another uh, uh, component that we send to one of our other facilities where it'll assemble a uh, finished uh, pharmaceutical vaccine needless injection system. So a lot of words, but basically what it does, it takes the owl out of a vaccine injection because it has no needle. And the way we do that is, um, this is part of the reservoir. It's a very small component, very small uh, channel, but has great pressures as they inject that through your skin needlessly. So because this is an injection system or a component injection system, it has to be molded in a clean room environment. This is a class eight clean room. And then uh, the part is then transferred to one of our other sites. Another unique item. It is unique and it, it also talks about the precision, the high quality, and in this case, the clean room requirements that are uh, required to make this part. It's, it's a fascinating product. It, it eliminates needles in vaccine injection. Matt, in looking at this, uh, it brings a couple questions to my mind. Is that a single use item or is that attached to a gun where it's used multiple times? What are the advantages or the benefits of it? Yeah, great question. So with this system, which is a drug delivery um, system for vaccines, there's a razor razor blade. So there's a disposable portion, which is the injection portion that touches the skin and also will have um, access to the vaccine itself. And then there's a re reusable portion, which is actually the, the device itself that propels the injection. So there's a razor razor blade piece. The benefits of that is the one part is reused and so it helps reduce the cost um, of per dose. And the other part is it helps reduce infection um, and it, you, you're able to dispose of the portion that comes in contact with the patient. One of the obligations that we have as a company, as a society, that we're very proud about, and this is another good example of that, is how do we design, develop, and manufacture devices that both improve the healthcare or outcomes at lower costs. And what's great about this is it does both. You have a reusable component, which is lower cost. The disposable portion is inexpensive, but also it's a more efficient delivery system than a traditional vaccine method where they'll um, take a, a needle and syringe, fill it up, squirt some vaccine out, and then inject it. It also, what it does is it eliminates all that waste. And so it's more efficient and they get more vaccine delivered for the same amount of dollar. Better outcomes, lower cost. Sounds great.
Matt, uh, in looking at this item, I see you have a metal component combined with a plastic part. That's right, Mike. So this component is actually an overmolded component with metal. So we have metal and plastic to come together. This is a component that's a part of a drug delivery device that we manufacture in our plant in Menominee, Wisconsin, where the other uh, components come together in that plant as well. What's interesting about this is we also marry up the device with the drug itself, in this case, epinephrine. People will use this as an auto injector if they were stung by a bee or if they have a peanut allergy and they need to take a uh, epinephrine shot, we make that device. In this case, this metal uh, overmolding is very critical because it's what stops the injection to make sure that it works. If it doesn't work, obviously that could be bad. And uh, the precision, the quality, and the consistency of how we manufacture this is critical for this product. Well, you've showed me a lot of fascinating things here today, Matt. Well, hey, thanks, Mike, for taking the time. It's always a pleasure to show you all the interesting things we do here. I think that's probably it for what's out here. So if it makes sense, maybe we should go on inside and talk sure. a little more about the company. Sounds good. Great, thanks. Well, as we went through the plant today, I saw a lot of interesting and fascinating things. And one of the things that I really wondered about is I see people working and you have uh, so much impressive equipment. And my understanding is the equipment costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so when somebody comes here and wants a job and you're gonna trust them on your half a million dollar machine to work in an environment that has to be absolutely uh, clean, precise, uh, exacting. Uh, what do you look for in people to hire here? It's, it's a great question because one of the foundations or principles that we run the business on is we, we invest in three basic things. And um, the first and foremost is our people. Um, it's our people that are the heart and soul of Phillips Medicize. And it's because of our people that we're able to earn and keep the confidence of our customers and produce the quality products that we do. So you're absolutely right to point that out because it's one of the most important things. And of course, the processes we invest in and the facilities which we saw. Um, on the people side, we invest uh, in screen people that have a uh, hard work ethic um, that are dedicated conscientious and actually understand that what they're making could be used to either save themselves, a loved one, or a co-worker in terms of the devices that we make. So that I really have an appreciation for what we're trying to do. But we have to train them. So a big part of what we do and spend time on is training people on the position and the responsibilities that they have. And we also work with a lot of the um, extensions within the state of Wisconsin, the community colleges to, uh, from the trade schools so that they're trained and educated. And in some cases, um, we sponsor uh, some of those training courses. In other cases, we work with the University of Wisconsin, Stout. Um, we bring in a lot of interns and they get um, experience while they're going to school or trade school. And we do a lot of postgraduate work. After someone graduates, we have what we call an EIT, engineering and training where they will rotate throughout um, the organization in different roles and responsibilities and learn how the business is and what our processes and procedures are so that they're ready to do the job uh, when they get it. I talked to uh, several people today and was surprised to find that uh, they weren't uh, brought in from far-flung places. They're relatively local, you know, Medford and uh, Superior. So uh, they're from Wisconsin and able to work here. Yeah, that's one of the things that we pride ourselves on is, is that we are an organization in the community for the community and um, we want to hire, be able to hire locally. And so as a result of that, a lot of the things that we do is not everybody will have you know, all of the skills that we'll need, but we, if they have the right attitude, um, they're willing to work hard, 
they're dedicated and they're conscientious, which is really critical with regard to the quality component of what we do. Um, in many cases, we can help provide some of the training on the jobs. May you had mentioned earlier that uh, this company got started, I think, in 1964, and uh, yeah, that was interesting because that's about the same time my dad got started in business and things really started to grow. Uh, how did this get started and why in uh, Phillips? Yeah, it's a great question. So today we're in Phillips, Wisconsin. Um, I noticed on our way in, they were actually getting ready for the um, festival this weekend from Czech. It's interesting, Bob Cervanka, who's the founder of the company in 1964, is originally from Czech, uh, Czechoslovakia, and wanted to locate um, his business in a community that he was comfortable with where there is um, a strong work ethic and where um, he could have that, that connection with the community. So a lot of the businesses that we have today in Wisconsin are in some of the smaller towns. And um, Bob has grew the business up uh, through the years, um, just expanding into some of the local uh, towns that had some of the similar uh, work ethic and culture that he was looking for. It's my understanding uh a lot of towns in northern Wisconsin or Wisconsin, period, have situations where people immigrated here from Europe and they brought a trade or a skill they had and that's where they got started. Well, so Bob actually uh, grew up here um, in the United States but in this area because his family had relocated here and was an engineer at heart and um, got into um, injection molding and and at that time, um, um, plastics was the future to be in. And he was really a pioneer in injection molding. And what he prided himself on was doing what could not be done in an injection molding machine to advance the science and the technology, to always look for ways to be able to do more in injection molding. And that's really, um, our, our heritage and our foundation and what will carry us forward is taking some of the basic principles you put into the business to create what is really an engineering company to understand how we can uh, continue to innovate around different processes to do um, more complex and innovative parts uh, and sub-assemblies and finished devices. I guess that was the impression I had today that yeah. uh, it's really paramount to have that continual innovation and be able to do things better than you used to do them. I guess it you know, makes you feel admiration for Bob to think back when he was doing that, uh, he was really sticking his neck out. Yep. And uh, to see that the, the business has developed like it has, it's pretty amazing. Well, you know, um, the business, you know, the, the business, its culture is based on its founders. And he built a very sturdy and solid foundation from which the business continued to grow. And that's built around the principles of people, process, and purpose-built facilities. And also the one around innovation. We don't make our own products. We make other people's products. So we pride ourselves in creating partnerships built on innovation in this case, our customers' innovation around a new injection system or a new drug delivery device, and our innovation around how to do uh, and invest in process technologies to do that more effectively, efficiently, and at a higher quality. And investing in people, process, and purpose-built facilities is the foundation which got us here, and it's gonna be the foundation that allows us to be competitive on a global scale um, going into the future and continue to allow us to grow in the state of Wisconsin. What I find particularly interesting with what you just said is uh, our philosophy is kind of the opposite of that. <laughs> we don't let anybody do anything for us. We do all of our own manufacturing because we like to have control over it and feel like we can provide the best quality. And in your business, uh, it's just the opposite. They come to you for the best quality. And you know what you do works great for you and what we do works for us. Well, you know, your business model is a great example of why what we say is that it's our people that allows us to earn and keep the trust of our customer. And when we do what we do, it's because the, fundamentally, on a people-to-people -people basis, they trust our capability, our competency, and our ability to execute. And um, it it's really comes down to the quality and the capabilities of our people that allow us to keep that trust to allow somebody 
to relinquish that control and allow us to do that. So um, I think you're a great example of why we are so proud of the fact that customers do entrust in us to be able to make the things that we do. Yeah, and we have the same situation where it comes down to the people and the graphics you had out here of all of the hands, you know, it really comes down to that level that makes the business go. Yeah, it's um, our eyeballs and the heads that come up with the ideas and it's our hands and fingers that make it come to uh, um, fruition. So it's really the connecting of those that allow us to make the products that we do. I kind of grew up in the business, in the industry. Uh, I grew up in a, a fishing family and my dad was always in the business ever since I can remember. And I love to fish, so it was kind of a natural for me to stay in it and uh, be associated with the fishing business. And I did find that being in the fishing business isn't like fishing, but it still inspires me and motivates me. So uh, what inspires and motivates you? I'm going on, I think, my 26th year in the broader uh, medical device drug delivery industry. And I started in that just shortly after college and it always wanted to be in the industry because of just some of the, the, the good things that, that come from it. And I think one of the things I take uh, a great pride in is, is that we design, develop, and manufacture devices that are improved to, that are designed to improve the life of a loved one or a colleague or, or, or a friend. A lot of the things that we do, um, t we touch every day. And I take a great deal of pride and satisfaction from that, that we can have an impact on you know, healthcare and be able to improve um, the outcomes at a low, lower cost by better design and partnerships with Big Pharma and MedDevice. So that actually gets me up um, every day, is to know that when I'm walking through and you can see from our plant that we have a broad variety of different types of medical devices that we make um, that people are using every day. And I get pretty excited about that. The other thing that, that uh, is exciting for me is that through the success of the company, because of the people, it creates the opportunity for the people um, in the state of Wisconsin and across our, our plants around the globe. And there's a great deal of satisfaction that comes with that. Um, that gets me up every day, that makes me feel um, good about the fact that we can create opportunities for people, um, creating products that improve um, our daily lives. So that's what gets me excited. I can understand that. And uh, when I look at what you do and the products you make, I, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, you accomplish something, but there's always something new out there that you can do better or a new project that you can uh, do more efficiently or, or provide a, a better end use for it. So I could see how you would be motivated by that. And then in conjunction with providing uh, opportunities for people. Continuous improvement and um, continuing to look for ways to do things better and to help our customers more is something that just, it, it's just, you know, part of our fabric and it, it's something that um, is always, you know, very exciting to do. I've been in the fishing tackle business for many, many years and I've seen a lot of trends, of course, during that time, some positive, some negative. And uh, I guess in looking at your business, it seems like you know, there's some very strong trends and positive trends, but it would be difficult to keep up with all of them. How do you do that? It's a great question, and, and I think we're, we're blessed by um, a, a kind of the old uh, saying, as they say, um, all boats rise in a rising tide, and we happen to be in an industry where we have some very good uh, trends. One is the uh, aging um, population is consuming more health care. Um, the second trend is as we try to figure out how to serve the aging population is how do we do that with better outcomes more cost effectively. And that's driving some very critical main trends. And those main trends are a shift towards more self-diagnosis and self-treatment from the traditional model where you had an intensivist view. In order to do that, technology um, has to come into play 
to be able to allow you to diagnose um, and self-treat. And a lot of the devices that we manufacture um, and we work with our customers on in de designing and developing are taking advantage of that. Wearables is a good example where today you may, uh, a diabetic patient may actually have a wearable infuser and a wearable um, uh, glucose meter that interfaces with their iPhone that tells them what their glucose readings are and then subsequently they can dial in how much uh, insulin they need to respond to that. That's kind of taking advantage of that self-diagnosis, self-treatment, utilizing te um, today's technology and we play right into those major trends. Last weekend, Matt, I went to a graduation party for actually a set of twins that I know. Oh. And uh, there's a lot of graduation parties going on this season? time of year. New people in the workforce. And it makes me wonder, what message would you have for all these young people coming into the workforce and trying to make it in life? You know, um, it is the season for graduation and where people are starting to get out there and think about what their next phase or what their next step is in, in their life. And I think, you know, um, the, the most important thing for them, I think, is to think optimistically about the future and to think about optimistically about the opportunities that are available out there because there are many and there are plentiful. The key is finding one that really gets them excited, um, that allows them, like you have or like myself, where we've stayed in a particular field for a long time, and they continue to get energized and can continue to grow and to improve themselves and the, the field that they've, they've chosen. And I think that's what's, what, what is it that they can find? And if they're not certain, that's okay. Then find a path that allows them to go and experience a couple other areas or a couple different things to find out um, what it is that excites them. If it's going into another four years of college, Great. If it's going into a trade school that they think might be interesting, like you know, we hire a lot of folks out of, great. If it's um, doing an internship or even getting some on-job training and asking at that time to uh, get moved around to different positions so they can experience it, great. I think when they're right out of college, I think that's an opportunity to be optimistic and to think about the future and uh, find those things that excite them that they can dig into, commit themselves, be conscientious, and work hard. I would second that. <laughs> okay. Matt, it's been uh, really interesting, just fascinating here today, and I guess, uh, you know, to see something other than the fishing tackle industry for a day, uh, it's actually inspiring to see what's going on in small town northern Wisconsin. I appreciate the invite and the opportunity to go through your plant today. Well, thanks, Mike, for taking the time. I really appreciate it. It's always fun to talk about um, our business and what we do and, and, and recognize the, the amount of time it takes to be um, out of the office. So that's a big commitment on your part. Hopefully, at some point in time, we can maybe get out and do a little bit of fishing. I still fish with my kids and would love to see if we can bring something into the boat. That sounds like a plan. I've concluded my tour of Phillips Metasize and hope you'll join us again next week when Matt Jennings will be visiting another great Wisconsin company.